This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Today on CityCast Philly, it's the Friday News Roundup. We're talking about a push from elected officials to get more than 2,000 young Black men registered to vote. And Philly debuts its first autonomous bus, why isn't everyone getting on board? It's Friday, March 1st. I'm Trinae Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Joining me this week is Pat Loeb, City Hall Bureau Chief for KYW News Radio, who's actually down at City Hall. Hey, Pat. Hi. And Mir Rindy, investigative reporter for Billy Penn. Glad to see you again, Mir. Hey there, Trinae. Okay, let's have some fun and start with an icebreaker. March 2nd, which is Saturday, is Read Across America, a.k.a. Dr. Seuss' birthday. Around Philly, there might be some events happening to celebrate. I know my daughter is, um, they're having like a competition at their school where they have to read as many books as they can. So my question for you, do you have a favorite Dr. Seuss book? I guess uh, wherever you go, there you are. Oh, I think you're talking about, oh, the places will go. Oh, yes. I liked reading that one to my kids. Yeah. I do remember there's the one, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a bunch of silly rhymes, of course, but there's one rhyme about my hat is old, my something is gold. I can't remember, but uh, whatever that <laughs> book is, look it up and uh, it's it's pretty brilliant. I read that to my my son when he was little many times. Okay, nice. I like the classic Cat in the Hat. And then I loved um, how over the years they've adapted that story into um, really like magical like movies. I've, I've loved that. I just want to shout out this year's One Book, One Philadelphia selection is not a Dr. Seuss book, but it's a story called True Biz, a novel by Sarah Novick. And we'll have details in our show notes where you can get a copy at the free library. All right, let's get into some of the news of the week. Pat, Philly's had low voter turnout in some of the most recent elections, but when it comes to young Black participation at the polls, it could be even lower. So council member Isaiah Thomas has teamed up with some other members of council to work on a new initiative to register more than 2,000 young Black men before the November election. Why is this so important for him? Yeah, and also I think he would give credit to the City Commission Chair Omar Sabir. Uh, one feature of all of the uh, participants in this campaign is that they are Black men under 40. Uh, four City Council members and the Chairman of the City Commission. That's kind of sizable representation for that demographic. And so it's kind of a, a celebration of what they've achieved and also like a demonstration that this is what happens when we vote. But Commissioner Sabir has lined up some voting precinct data with census data by zip code. And what he's found is that in neighborhoods that are predominantly Black, voting was 11 percent lower in the 2023 election than in the 2019 election. And he found that concerning. He also says that data shows that the lower income you are, the less likely you are to vote. And of course, uh, low-income people need government services, uh, maybe even more than middle or higher income people. And so this is just something he wants to correct. And so they're going to be going out to schools and holding events and actually door knocking. And their goal is to get 2,024 voters for the 2,000. Oh, okay. I saw, okay. (laughs) Well, speaking of 2024, we are in a presidential election year. Could this push make a difference at the polls later this year? Oh, yes. Well, turnout in Philadelphia is going to be crucial. Joe Biden or Donald Trump, either one of them, has to win the state to win the presidency. The path to the presidency goes through Pennsylvania. And Philadelphia, for a long time, has been the key 
to how Pennsylvania goes just because we're such a huge population center. And so, yes, this could have very real ramifications, although all of the participants were at pains to say this is a bipartisan effort. There were no Republicans at the announcement, but there was the city councilman who's a member of the Working Families Party, Nick O'Rourke. So I guess that makes it bipartisan. (laughs) Gotcha. And along with Nick O'Rourke, Council Member Jeffrey J. Young and Anthony Phillips are also helping with this initiative. And Pat, since you're down at City Hall, any news you're looking at or keeping up with? Well, Council resumed session this week after taking a week off because of the death of longtime Chief Clerk Michael Decker. Very unexpected. He was only 58 years old, and he really hadn't groomed a successor. He'd been doing this for 15 years, and he'd been deputy before that. So, you know, he was prepared to step in when the last chief clerk stepped down, but no one really expected this. And so they were a little at sea last week. Also this week, uh, Mayor Sherelle Parker made her debut before the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber has an annual mayor's lunch. And the big news out of that was that she asked the chamber to get their workers back to the office in person. Nice. You can read Pat's reporting about all of these stories and the initiative we just talked about by checking out our show notes. More news of the week after the break. This is CityCast Philly. All right. Down at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, the city's first autonomous bus debuted. Mayor, did you take a ride on the bus? I did. I had the privilege of being on the first ride of this AV shuttle van with passengers. It had been tested before for months and and driven around or told to drive around. This was the first time with passengers, and I did get to be on that ride. Can you describe what it looks like inside? You know, it's a pretty normal uh, shuttle van, the kind of thing you might take from airport parking to the airport, or in this case, around an office park that is part of the Navy Yard at the southern tip of Philly. You know, regular seating. It has special doors to let wheelchair users on and disabled riders. Um, It was a little weird. I was sitting right behind the, the usual driver, and I got to watch him take his hands off the wheel, put them on the Mm. armrest, and then the wheel just started moving, the steering wheel started moving on its own, as did the the vehicle. So that that was pretty interesting. I'd never been in that situation before. Right. Even though there is no technical driver operating the bus, there are two bus operators to make sure that passengers got on safely. Yeah, so this project, there are several partners involved, and they include PennDOT, the State Department of Transportation, and the state has rules, PennDOT has rules saying for these kinds of vehicles, there need to initially be two operators, safety attendants, whatever you want to call them, for the first, I think it was 200 hours of operation. And then once they see that it's operating safely, it can go down to one operator, one person, but under current law under current regulations, they can't be totally driverless, these these vehicles within the state of Pennsylvania. How many passengers can fit in this shuttle? When I was there, there were nine passengers, uh, plus the two drivers. And how far did you all go? It was just a little circuit, maybe 10 minute, 15 minute slow van ride around the business district area of the Navy Yard. The van just kind of rolled along. It stopped at the stop signs. A couple times, it seemed like it got a little confused or a little cautious when another vehicle was approaching from a side road, for example, and it would sort of pull over and then start again. But for the most part, it was just like a regular shuttle trip. Now, what I found interesting after reading your article is that there's a lot of people weighing in on this new technology. Now, the SEPTA Drivers Union isn't jumping on the bandwagon. Why are they pushing back on this new bus? Well, it was an interesting coincidence. I happened to have heard from the National Transport Workers Union, which has a local chapter in Philly. Last week or in the, in the past couple weeks, 
one of their union locals in Ohio got some contract language that gives them veto power over AV being used in their system. And now the Philly union wants to have the same language. This came up, I uh, got an email, and then it turned out it was happening uh, that I was working on this on the same day that the Navy Yard shuttle was debuting. But what the unions say is that this technology is unsafe, someone could hack a vehicle. It also has the potential to uh, displace a lot of drivers, to kick them out of their jobs, essentially. Now, that's not supposed to happen anytime soon in the foreseeable future in Philly or really anywhere in the country. But they're, they're definitely raising alarms and they're, they're trying to keep autonomous technology from entering mass transit. Well, what's SEPTA said about this AV bus? I contacted someone at SEPTA and they said, we have no plans. We've had no discussions as far as, as far as this person knew. And they said, sure, we can talk about it in our contract negotiations happening later this year, but it's not really something that's a, a present issue for SEPTA from their perspective. Any word if they're going to expand into more self-driving buses at the Navy Yard? This particular vehicle right now is bounded just to within a very specific part of the Navy Yard. It's it's almost on a track in a way, on, a, on an invisible track. Um, they say they want to expand that to the stadium complex area, which is nearby, and to the Broad Street Line subway, which is really key because that's what this is all about, is getting people from the subway to the Navy Yard, to their jobs there so that they don't have to drive. That's the, the plan for sometime this summer, and it's unclear what might happen beyond that. All right. You can read Mir's full story on this AV bus by checking out our show notes. All right. That was Mir Rindy, investigative reporter for Billy Penn and Pat Loeb, City Hall Bureau Chief for KYW News Radio. Thank you both so much for joining me on CityCast Philly. Oh, Trine, this was fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's time for the tip of the week where we share a life hack for living in Philly. It is the 1st of March, but it's never too early to get a head start on your summer plans. The city's Department of Parks and Recreation recently posted about their upcoming summer camps at rec centers throughout the city. For more information, check out the link in our show notes. If you have a tip of the week, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Our executive producer is Laura Benchoff. Our producer is Abby Fritz. Our Hey Philly newsletter editors are Asha Prahar and Natalia Aldana. And our host is me, Trine Nuri. Music is by Philly's own Interminable, with additional music from All the Kimonos and James Weldon. If you enjoyed this week of episodes, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Philly. We'll be back Monday morning with more news from around the city. Have a great weekend and be safe, y'all. Bye.